And you you say so far, do you guys already have something in mind for the next studio offering? Yeah, sure. Uh, we're just finishing songwriting for the upcoming studio album, which will be probably out in uh, summer 2023. Mm -hmm. Hello, you Metal Pilgrims, and welcome to the new interview episode on our new channel, MP2 by Metal Pilgrim. And uh, today I'm more than happy to uh, welcome Georg of Serenity here on the channel. Georg, how's it going, man? Hi there. I'm fine, thank you very much. Just sitting in my office here, but yeah, yeah. I hope that this doesn't disturb you that much. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't fine. Man, I'm from Ukraine. Nothing disturbs me much except for one thing, so... Okay, 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 I see, I see, I see. <laughs> yeah. We're good. So, Georg, um, I, uh, first of all, uh, the biggest news about uh, Serenity in the, you know, in the latest uh, in the latest month or so is the release of your newest uh, live offering, Memoria. So can you please tell us a little bit of, um, you know, how did this idea of recording this live album arise? And, uh, you know, what did you guys want to, you know, kind of put in it and present to your old and new fans? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. I mean, the background is quite easy to tell because, uh, as you all know, we had this COVID shit running here as well in Austria. We heard about it. <laughs> yeah, clear, clear, clear. And uh, so we uh, planned the headlining tour in April 2020 uh, mm -hmm. for the latest album called The Last Night. Uh, but for sure, due to the COVID stuff, we were not able to, to make it. And so we tried to find any ideas or to, to find some ideas to, to over, uh, let's say, to, to use this COVID time to uh, play some concerts online or also some special things like this memorial uh, stuff here, where we said originally it was uh, only for 60 people because mm -hmm. this venue told us, okay, listen, if we do it during the COVID stuff with the restrictions and so on, uh, there has to be always uh, a space in between the people. Which so first it was planned for 60. <laughs> exactly. It was planned for 60 people. And so we started a crowdfunding campaign mm -hmm. uh, and the people loved the idea doing something like this. And uh, in the end, there was the second wave of the COVID, so we had to postpone the concert. Then we tried again to find an appointment or to find uh, a date to make it happen. And then the third wave of the COVID stuff and the lockdown came around again. So that's the reason why all in all we uh, had to postpone everything to May 2022. So originally it was planned in 2020. <laughs> And due to the things that I just explained, we had to make it in 2022. But in the end, uh, it was worth waiting because uh, people were able to attend the concert without the mask, uh, without any restrictions. So uh, yeah, there was really, really uh, a cool mood in the in during these two concerts. People were having a party there, and mm. so in the end, it was worth waiting it. This is this is awesome, awesome man. So how do you guys? I I understand that you know, recording a live show, you know, playing a show when you know that it's going to be recorded, it's a it's a slightly different feeling from when you just usually go out on stage, right? I mean, how did you pump yourself up and prepare yourself for a concert knowing that it's going to be recorded, released later on, and everyone around the world is going to be able to hear it? Okay. Uh, in the end, to be honest, for us or at least for me, I can just say for myself, it was not a huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, because you always want to deliver the best thing you can do. And uh, the only uh, difference was that for sure we had to check out with the lights and everything like this, that it's okay for the filming situation. Yeah. Uh, but for the rest of the time, I didn't think about uh, the filming thing. So for me, it was exactly the same, uh, filming or not filming. Um, what is now really great with the final result is that uh, everything worked well because that's the only thing, you know, not staying in front of a camera, mm -hmm. but that you're not sure if everything will work technical wise. If there is some, f if there are some problems with the with the cameras or with the um, <clears throat> with the recording of the instruments and voices and so on and so on, but everything worked. And one thing I really have to add here is that uh, we didn't re-record anything 
mm-hmm. it's everything life you know we didn't read on this one yeah there is really not even no guitars no vocals nothing was re-recorded it was just mixed and mastered this is awesome awesome man and you mentioned it uh, it was two nights right the two night event and uh, were, were the set lists absolutely different in two nights or was it kind of the same so you kind of have a Yeah. have this uh, room to wiggle if if you if after one night you see that one song didn't work out you kind of have you know time to put up next yeah. night <laughs> two nights with completely the same set list mm-hmm. because for sure um, we knew that um, if somebody makes a mistake or if something is happening we have a backup mm-hmm. and yeah in the end Uh, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have been necessary to do the backup because it worked on both evenings on both nights uh, but um, we used for the filming and also for the vocal uh, and and instrumental sessions only the second night mm-hmm. only only the second night yeah because was it, um, it, it was a bit more fluent let's say mm-hmm. And also, um, the atmosphere was uh, a bit more enthusiastic than on the first day. Mm-hmm. But this is probably also because of us, because on the first night, for sure, we were a bit more nervous, and um, the, the the running order was not completely in our blood, let's say. Mm-hmm. But uh, on the second night, everything went so smooth, also with the guests, because, you know, we didn't have any rehearsals with mm-hmm. the guests. Well, that's awesome, awesome. Man. And um, when it comes to you know creating a set list for for a show or for a set of shows like this, yeah. uh, how did you guys go around? I mean, because once again, one thing is just going out there and uh, doing a gig when you know that you are on a road promoting your latest album, like most of the bands do. You know, you kind of have to include at least four songs from the new record, and then um, you know, then the classics. So when it comes to a show like this that you know is going to be live and recorded um, how did you guys come around for for a set list um, first of all we for sure tried to focus on the most popular songs mm-hmm. from our history songs where we know that the fans are loving it mm-hmm. and a second thing was uh, that we chose songs which are able to play with uh, only acoustic instruments you know because for sure If you have uh, a song which is mainly based on orchestral stuff and so on, it's a bit harder. Or on really riff-based uh, things, r- really rougher songs, then it's a bit uh, more complicated to play them within this this acoustic lineup. But, and this is really something I'm proud of it, that we noticed that all the songs we chose worked very well in an acoustic version and uh, this is something Brian May from Queen uh, once said in an interview if a song works only with an acoustic guitar it's a great song mm-hmm. so. that's that's a good one that's a good one so and when it comes to you know to uh, basically coming up with the ideas for 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 a set list like this is it is it an imperative decision by one band member Or do you guys work as a living organism and you kind of interact and uh, fight over a song you want to hear? <laughs> <laughs> no, there was no real fight for it um, because in the end we have the same opinion about our most popular songs and songs we love to play. Mm-hmm. And uh, we also added uh, some newer stuff. For example, one exclusive new song is also on Memoria, Changing Times. Yeah. It was This song wasn't released on any album before. And also uh, the song In the Name of Scotland mm-hmm. is not released so far on any album. So there are two new songs on it. I mean, In the Name of Scotland, we played it already live before uh, at uh, our headlining concerts in 2018 and also in 2020 when we did this double headlining tour with Rage. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's not an album so far. So. And you, you say so far, do you guys already have something in mind for the next studio offering? Yeah, sure. Uh, we are just finishing songwriting for the upcoming studio album, which will be probably out in uh, summer 2023. Mm-hmm. Wow, nice. And uh, what is that going to sound like? Is it a classic Serenity, this classic banging heavy metal, or are you guys going to experiment and wiggle around a little? Um, 
no, not really experimental uh, things uh, are coming here. It's again a typical Serenity album with uh, melodic, uh, symphonic, power metal. Yeah. All right, and what's when 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 it works? You know, when it comes to writing new material, and especially after COVID, because I feel like for a lot of musicians especially for people in our industry COVID has changed so much right in terms of the way we interact in terms of the way we just look at the industry overall did it change your writing style at all or no. the way you approach writing music no, not at all the only thing that i really want to give everybody on its way uh, that hopefully everybody noticed after COVID that uh, watching shows on the TV and staying at home is sometimes perhaps a nice idea, but in the end, a real uh, concert feeling is only possible if you if you get up your ass and go to the concert hall, that you buy a ticket and that you party hard with the people there and not stay at home uh, eating some chips and just watch any streams, you know? 100% agree with you, brother. And I always say, and uh, the subscribers know that, that real heavy metal lives only in sweaty clubs and on festivals where you yep. grab a beer or cranberry juice with the random stranger next to you and, yeah, uh, exactly. and give your best. Exactly. Yeah. Because I think, especially nowadays, everything or so many things are happening on the internet, you know? Uh, Instagram, TikTok, all this social media stuff. People are spending, uh, yeah, hours a day on this social media in the end for nothing at all, you know? And you cannot um, you cannot replace this um, feeling directly live at a concert, like you said, sweat, uh, tears and laughs and whatever, uh, mm -hmm. having a beer together, uh, getting in touch with new people, with new uh, friends. And so, yeah. That's a it, really important it, message. It just reminded me how much I miss real concerts, man. Uh, really, really hope to, to be able to go to one soon. And, uh, you know, we in Ukraine would love to welcome Serenity when you guys are on the road next time. We have a we little... love to be there. We have to deal with. Uh, but then after that, more than happy to welcome you in Cape, brother. <laughs> So what is next uh, for Serena? I, I know you're working on the new album already, but in between that, before summer 2023, what can a fan expect from the band? Um, any live shows scheduled that you haven't announced yet or something like that? No, not really live shows because we have to concentrate now on recording and finishing our new album. Mm -hmm. uh, so the plan is that we will enter in February and March the studio to record everything and then we're already uh, thinking about the cover concept and uh, the, the whole artwork concept and so on and then yeah probably the release like I said should take place in summer uh, we have to fix the release date with our label Napalm Records and then a new masterpiece will be out. <laughs> That's awesome, awesome, man. And you mentioned, and I have to answer the, uh, ask this now, you mentioned you already are, you know, working and thinking on the concept for the cover art and everything, you know, <laughs> around the album. So is there going to be a certain concept for this album uh, overall? Yep. And if so, yep. can you share some details? Yeah, uh, I cannot share really details because uh, we just started with the lyrics. And so, yeah, we have to see how everything will work but it will be for sure again a historic concept album uh, like also in the past and it will be probably about a famous painter uh, who lived around 1500 uh, mm -hmm. and coming from a town called Nuremberg in Germany Mm, that's interesting. I, I, I guess I'll go Wikipedia now. <laughs> famous painters from the 15th century who were born in Nuremberg <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, that's that's great to hear, man. Man, I can I can go on forever, but um, I know the time is limited as always. So just a couple more questions, and uh, and the, and that's it, man. So forgetting about the the album uh, and uh, you know and whatever is coming next, can you remember one of the craziest touring stories which happened to you on the road? <laughs> yeah, to be honest, there are many, many crazy touring <laughs> <This> stories. This one. <laughs> we can record a separate episode with the, with the collection of stories from Georg. <laughs> no, but still, one of my highlights is for sure, I mean, it was on our very first tour back in 2007. 
Mm -hmm. um, first of all, everything was exciting for us back then, you know, for sure. Uh, entering a nightliner and, and playing concerts in foreign places and so on. But back then, our keyboardist, uh, he had an accident um, with skiing just mm -hmm. uh, some weeks before the tour. So he broke his finger on the left hand. And <laughs> but he had to come on tour with us for sure. So um, he had, uh, I don't know the word in English, you know, this white. The cast. Uh, the cast. The cast, yeah. cannot, exactly. He had a cast on his hand and only three fingers were free. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, it was a bit of a challenge for him to play the keyboards uh, with these three fingers from the left hand. hand. Uh, and then we played the show in Munich and he really felt off stage. <laughs> Not because he was drunk, because the light engineer, he just tested something during the sound check and it was completely dark on stage and he just missed the stairs oh my God. and uh, he felt off stage and so he hurt his right hand. <laughs> oh <my God>. so, <laughs> the next day we played the show in Switzerland and he was staying on stage, uh, yeah, completely like a handicap, you know. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, we were we, we really made fun of him. Uh, he was not that happy, but yeah, yeah, that's life. <laughs> but that's that's a good story. Do you have any videos or photos of that? <laughs> yeah, there was even there was even in the in the in the big magazine called Rock Hard magazine in yeah. Germany, there was a, a life report, and for sure this story was part of it. That's awesome, awesome man. The, the, I, this is what this is what you live for. Once again, this is what rock and roll is about: going on the road and sharing those crazy stories afterwards. Uh, this this is what rock and roll is. Not yeah. online, you wouldn't be able to tell that story online. <laughs> <laughs> true, true, true. All right, man. Thank you so much for joining me today. Any last Thank you. fans? Any you know old and new that you wanna you know anything you wanna share with them? Now, uh, one more time. First of all, thank you very much for the support because Serenity is in the scene now already since several years. Yeah. And uh, we still have really a, a, a big fan base, a loyal fan base, which is not for granted nowadays. Yeah. Uh, and the, the second thing, like I already said, please come to the concerts, buy tickets, t-shirts and so on, because especially now, the scene needs it, you know, not only for Serenity, also for other bands. Uh, and it would be really a huge loss if this special scene would just break away because nowadays we are too lazy to get up our asses from the couch and go or drive to a concert just because there are streaming concerts uh, available. 100% agree with you and uh, I sign with every word you just said. Guys, thank, thank you. you so much for joining us today. Uh, Georg here from Serenity. And just a reminder, the Serenity's latest live album, Memoria, is out via Napalm Records. Make sure to check it out. I mean, it's 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 a great record. Just trust thank me. You. If you haven't heard it yet, make sure to check it out. Georg, thank you so much for joining me, man. Keep rocking. Thank you, and see you soon, man. Yeah, thank you. All the best.